welcome back to episode 35 of my Stationers Mars playthrough. So last time we got the uh, gas fuel generator running um, uh, so to at least uh, some extent, certainly better than we had had previously. Um, you, you'll see we still haven't solved the uh, greenhouse shoot problem. Um, it's slightly better than it was with the stacker, but um, exactly as I feared. Um, the, uh, the way that the Harveys work, they don't stack things, and therefore um, it's only uh, reduced the scale of the problem rather than actually solving it. But uh, there we go, um, such is life. Um, anyway, um, in the meantime, I'll just pick up some of this. Um, what we're going to do in this episode is, um, you may have noticed now, um, with the uh, stuff we did last time um, and just more generally with other things we've got going on we're starting to get to the point where we're generating quite a lot of hot gas um, so I'm going to try and um, deal with hot gas uh, processing um, in this episode um, but actually also and that's part of the reason I'm picking all this up is um, we're going to generally try and deal with hazardous materials and hazardous materials actually in stationers does include composting because composting gives off quite hot hydrogen and um, nitrogen or volatiles and nitrogen now not necessarily a problem but you don't want to just dump that straight into the waistline um, mixing hot hydrogen with room temperature or you know, possibly even hotter oxygen uh, tends to blow your fuel lines up, uh, your um, gas waste lines up so um, we actually need to just do something with that that's uh, just a little bit more careful than uh, simply stick a composter inside and hope for the best um, so if I can get myself unstuck from here which is a uh, could take the whole episode in and of itself there we go um, then we are going to attempt to deal with that. Um, so I'm going to fling these in here first because uh, because we can. Um, but some of this food um, in future we can actually start to send off to deliberately de decompose it. Um, which is obviously helpful um, in terms of uh, we're starting to generate quite a lot. Um, and uh, we can deliberately decompose it or we can feed it directly in. I can't shut that fridge now, that's really annoying. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it's an interesting new problem. Um, oh, come on, I hit the hitbox, there we go. Um, so we're, we will be able to use that in the composter. Um, which will give us a source of hydrogen, but actually also nitrogen. But obviously we need hydrogen um, in order to run the fuel generator. So it's important to have a sustainable source. Um, we are also later going to make a, uh, an oxygen farm. We'll do that inside. That's more, more of a greenhouse. Um, but we're going to start, um, well, what am I doing that for? I just wasted oxygen, um, wasted atmosphere, Never mind. Never mind, never mind. Right, okay, let's try not to make that mistake again. We're going to start off, uh, concentrate on what we're doing, so we're going to start off doing, um, we're going to start off by laying out some space for a hazardous materials area. Um, I'm just going to uh, just top up this because uh, I'm down to my last filter. So we're going to need more steel frames. Um, I do think we're going to need to go and get some more coal just to make steel with shortly. Let's drop that in there. In fact, perhaps I'll go and grab a little bit now while that's doing its thing. Again, we're not going hugely far. 
see whether I can see any within reasonable distance of base. This is not a full mining expedition, however there is some cobalt which we also will need um, for a number of reasons and we don't have any currently so I'm just going to grab some. We're going to need it when we get as far as making the advanced furnace, um, which we will be doing quite soon, but I want to deal with the hot gas processing first because Otherwise we will just be stacking a problem on top of another problem. Um, at the moment we don't really have an efficient way to uh, cool that gas. We're just dumping it in a couple of tanks and sort of hoping for the best. Um, I want to try to uh, first of all use a larger tank, um, but then secondly try to actually build a, an active cooling system for it. Um, so that we hopefully manage to uh, thin it out a bit. We're obviously slightly less reliant on coal for fuel now than we were, which is very good news. Um, but we obviously still need it for making steel. So I'm going to make a big batch of steel this time, I think. It was a big batch. Right, um, let's begin by throwing this one into this chute here. That's fine, and we'll keep the rest. Um, okay, we'll pop the cobalt in here. Don't need that yet. I'm actually going to drop one of it inside though because. I do want to try and make that medical pill. It is on my list of things to do. That's good, we've got that sorted. Uh, we need one more. Never quite goes the number of times I request, does it? As if to prove the point. Um, and she's going to do a very quick flyover and just keep an idea. Okay, we're we're fairly well off. For basically everything, possibly nickel and lead, are a bit low. Um, so if we have anything that we need them for, we need to bear that in mind. But everything else, I think we're in pretty good shape. Right. Okay. Let's um, dial this in to uh, steel. Turn that on so it can pressurise, let it do its thing. Right, good. Um, I don't know. Just check the amount of steel in here. Yeah, we can't build very much yet. And what I'm going to do is build a large tank. Um, we are going to need quite a lot of pipes though, so we can start on some of those now. Um, let's do that. Okay, and well, there's hardly any left, but I'm going to let that just do its thing. Let's get over here. So I'm going to build that yellow pipe's going to come out. I'm going to build the hazardous processing area over here, I think, because most of it involves gases that we will need to get back there. Um, We will have to think about how to get materials over here for the composting. And I could potentially do the composting inside and bring the gas out, but it just feels like it's probably just as easy to uh, lay out a large area here and do everything 
in one space. We'll use shoots to bring the uh, raw material to the composters from the greenhouses, which obviously we'll need some thinking about. I've got a bit of an idea of where we might do that, but um, there we go. It's quite a large area. Uh, right, so we don't need that yellow. So I'm going to pinch those because. Uh, careful to take this back in this order so that it's just compressing any atmosphere that's in the pipes back rather than right okay that's a t-junction I'm gonna leave that there in case we need to mount anything else later I mean this is a little bit of an annoyance it will make access a bit difficult we might build a little bridge over here or something um, I don't know um, that is the only downside This is quite a nice area to use. I can't really think of anywhere better. We could do it near at the base, but then we've got to get the gas here. We've either got to bring raw materials to here and process them, or we've got to process the raw materials and bring the gas to here. So the hot gas is being generated there and over there. So this is as easy a site as any for, uh, for that. We can relocate this infrastructure here over to there. Um, but it's just getting over here is a bit of a challenge. probably a catch. Once we put floor grating we can walk between the tanks actually. It's then just this CO2 line here but perhaps we can oops, drop that slightly. might be able to do something like this. Yeah, that'll work. do is we'll bring that up here, round there. There we go, you'll never even know it was there. That'll work. Uh, right. some pipe moaning noises. I'm hoping it was the side effect of me connecting something to something else causing a momentary pressure surge, not uh, an indication that something is horrible about this about to explode. Okay, that tank's fine, that tank's fine, that tank's fine, that tank's fine, that tank is fine. No, okay, the tanks are all good. That's a start. That one's almost ready to empty. Okay, hopefully it was just a side effect of uh, me compressing some atmosphere as I contracted that pipe. All looks okay. Right, 
right, there's our steel. While it's hot, I might actually make some more electrum. See what happens. Uh, why did that not stack? Okay, that was just strange. Useful. Um, what else do we need? I will want those volume pumps later. That portable generator we've never used is going in the recycling. Goodbye, portable generator. should be inside. Similarly, I don't know if we're going to use these, but we can always make more if we need them. There we go. Right, that still left us with a few emergency tools. Good. So actually we haven't got enough tank kits there anyway, we're going to need... This is an example where we're going to have to make more tanks than we need and dismantle the two later on, thus leaving us with tank kits that we, we don't need anymore. But I can't take out those two pink tanks. Um, and leave us with nowhere to hold hot gas whilst I build somewhere to make to store hot gas that would be um, risky and stupid and we're not risky or stupid here sometimes uh, right let's uh, stack that okay so far that's looking like a decent start So my plan here is to create, do you want to think we will need plastic sheets, is to create an area where we will have a large tank which can hold hot gas, which 
which is made up of five normal tanks. Um, so that will give us a very large dumping ground for hot gas. And what I plan to do is to have some logic that releases it in batches into a set of pipes with radiators. And we may already be able to reuse the ones we've got near to the original furnace to do this. Have it go into there have some logic, fill them to a certain level and then stop and then wait until they are cool and then pump that out into the standard waste gas lines and then cycle some more in. Um, the idea being that if we try and cool down a large tank full of hot gas it's going to take a really long time and we'll probably be topping it up with more hot gas from various processes at least as fast as it's cooling down so we may actually just kind of have a constant reservoir of gas that's too hot to do anything with whereas by bringing small batches of it out at a time they'll cool much faster and then we can use those back into the standard gas processing that's my plan it may or may not turn out to be a good plan but that is my plan so we're going to start over here by laying some of these, not these because I've just fallen in a hole and that annoys me. Okay, that's everything welded at least once. We'll go and uh, switch out the welder battery because um, it's kind of a bit low. Okay, so I think we'll do our hot gas processing here. Um, we'll bring it this way to cool, we'll probably move this windmill at some point, uh, but we'll bring it this way to cool and uh, then we've just got to get it into the uh, dark green lines which I think if we run up here and along above that black one we can then drop it down uh, down there across there and join it in here so I think that's my plan for routing it um, once it's cooled, but the first thing is going to be just have a cooling area. Um, okay, that's obviously counts as part of that. That's uh, interesting. It's quite a big footprint. Hmm. Yeah, right, okay. All right. That's high enough to be clear. So let's uh, let's colour code these as we go. I know this is not the most efficient way to use paint, but we're not exactly sure. Right. So if we're going to have the hot gas tank over here somewhere. Right, so you can see if we start with this, if I now roll to the next one up, you can see we end up with an enormous tank. Um, which 
I want to put I don't want to put it too near to the solars because uh, I actually think it's so big it's going to block the light from some of them. Um, certainly when the sun is low in the sky, but I'm hoping that with the mountain being where it is, yeah, that's fine. Right, okay, so that is going to be a gigantic, shortly pink tank where we can store all of the hot gas. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll set up a cooling array over this side. We might even lift it up a bit. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that. Um, Something like this. Power low. Flying pipes. It's lucky that uh, real physics doesn't apply, isn't it? Um, makes it a bit easier for putting these in, but. So let's assume that we're going to need some... I mean, the advantage of putting it up there is actually we could bring this all the way to here. And then any switch logic for sending it up, we can put the valves down here and then pipe it straight up from underneath. Which seems perfect. We're going to need a lot more pipe. Didn't think there was any left in there, was there? No. Always worth a little check, though. Let's actually just do this bit first. Pink paint. Do we have any? No, I think we used it up. That's fine. Let's make one. I think we need to put some more steel in here. Uh, steel iron in here because I think we used it all last time. Oh no, just about got enough to make one can of pink paint. I mean, it won't be enough, but. Right, let's take these 14. Well, if nothing else, it makes a statement. Um, all right, let's. Uh No one's going to miss it, are they? This is a real quick way of uh, repainting a bunch of pipes without using any actual paint. Um, So obviously we're going to have fins on here, I'm just thinking actually I'm getting a bit low, so let's just do this. I want to try and work out where we're going to bring the uh, vertical up. There 
There we go. Right. Okay. It's a bit ungainly. It looks a bit like a old school TV uh, aerial at the moment, but uh, get the idea. And then we'll probably remove most of these off here. Right, what we will need is we'll need some valves to control the flow, so I'm going to quickly uh, Also going to want digital valve, which needs invar. Okay, we can make invar. Uh, what do I need for invar? Uh, I need nickel and iron. Okay, we can do that. Whoops. Um, one nickel, one iron. Hydration critical. Ah, got stuck on the vent. I do need to fix that at some point. Right, okay, this is not. Uh, not functioning at the moment, is it? What's in there? Oh, it's still emptying from the previous cycle. Okay, so we're going to make some Electrum and we're going to make some Invar. I remember what the setting is for Invar, whether it's four or five. I'm going to take a guess and then it's bound to be wrong. Uh, right, so let's... In fact, I'm going to... Whoops. Basically, I'm going to paint all of this because... Uh, And I need it. There we go, right, that's going to be our cooling radiator. going to have an input and an output on that and the output will feed into uh, into this cool here so I think that will go somewhere along here and I guess at that point it becomes cold um, some method here I promise. I forgot to pick up the valves didn't I or did they go on my belt? No, no I just forgot to pick them up. So doing its thing yet? No. sure what's going on here. I thought that was almost empty but then it seems to be uh, not almost empty. Leave that turned off for a minute. Right, 
Right, so what I'm going to want to do is to have... I was going to build a digital valve, but actually I could probably do the job more efficiently with a pump, thinking about it. Um, we'll turn that on um, at the right... Oh, turn it on at the right temperature and turn that one on at the right temperature. Um, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Don't actually even need those valves then, do we? Although it would be helpful for breaking the line up. Right, we need to get hot gas from over there. Okay, hang on to them. I think we will need them. Um, if nothing else, I know somewhere that we're definitely going to need them. Okay, so hot gas tank into there, into there, out of there. So we'll need a pipe analyzer on here so that we can actually monitor the state of it. Um, and then obviously we're going to need to bring hot gas along here somewhere. Okay, you can see we're nowhere near done, even though we've used all those pipes. Oh, it's painful watching this empty. Right, I think the new combustion uh, mechanics are messing with this because the furnace is now retaining heat in a way it didn't used to, which means that this needs this chip needs modifying to wait longer. I mean, I'm not complaining; it is more realistic. The furnace doesn't immediately become cold the second it's got no atmosphere in it. Um, but what's happening is every time we introduce any more fuel, um, it just ignites. So we need that to cool down. Anyway, um, right, what are we doing? We're producing more pipes. That's what we're doing. Um, pipe. Analyzer, we need one of those. I need some gold. Oof. Okay, obviously, uh, there was a bit of gold stacked up. Never mind, that's fine. We'll have uh, at least one of them before we have a couple of them, to be fair. Right, and then let's get an actual pipe kit. Oops, pressed all the buttons. Okay, so we're going to need yet another IC, aren't we? Um, I wonder when we finish this base whether we're going to have used more wire, more pipe or more ICs. <laughs> that going.
right now I'm not sure I may join the other one there but I haven't quite decided yet so I'm going to just hedge my bets a little bit Hoping we can run this all on the uh, existing pink network. Don't really want to have to create yet another power network. It is basically atmospheric processing, so it would make a lot of logical sense if we can. Just a question of whether we've got enough power capacity, because these some of this stuff's going to be a bit power hungry. Right, that's a start. Um, we possibly need to know that as well, but we'll worry about that when we get there. Um, okay, so uh, what are we going to do? We're going to call this um, hot gas radiator hot gas storage hot gas radiator in hot gas radiator out don't want to confuse those two Okay, now next thing is, can we get cabling across here, maybe, hopefully. Oops. Come on, go down. Okay, that's actually reasonably neat. Right, okay. So that will allow us to monitor the temperature in here. The temperature over there. Power critical. And we'll be able to then control Power these critical. to drive gas in here and pressurise it then leave it to cool and then when it's cool pump it out into here which obviously needs to still be connected and then recycle rerun the whole cycle that's my plan um, let's see how we get on okay I actually think that might be enough pipes now. I'm not 100% sure, I will be honest. And I, I'm, no, I'm not being funny, I'm genuinely not 100% sure that that's enough, but... Okay, that is now cool. Now, you may let gas in. No, it shoots up straight away. What's going on? See, that's no good to us at all because uh, it's just auto igniting. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave it for a bit longer to settle.
be more concerned about not losing their nickel if we have a storm than uh, anything else. Right, okay, let's. Uh, See how we get on. Okay, uh, bring these across at this height. far enough out actually. No I didn't, did I? Because that won't go there. As usual, I'm running the pipes close to where I want them, but I'm not actually connecting them up yet. just remodel that. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Let's run it close into the fuel line. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, so what we'll do, we'll just get these connected. That will give us a nice long run here. And then I'm going to go through here. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, we'll go through this one, that's fine. Probably smarter to go through at ground level just in case at some point I want to create a route through here. On reflection. Okay, that's fine. And then that can come through here. Hi. 
anger, caution. Okay, and then we'll go one, two, we'll put the other valve in there. And we'll do that. Okay, so let's uh, Okay, so that has got us most of the way through here. I'm going to leave that open for now because we're going to be coming and going a bit. Um, right, so obviously none of this is yet connected to a hot gas system. Um, we're going to be removing this um, and replacing it with the link directly into there. Um, but now we need to think about how we're going to do that cooling. Um, actually, we could probably connect that now. How much gas is in there? Um, quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit, and it's quite hot. So maybe well, yeah, we can do this we can do this we'll, we'll dump it in the other one that'd be the best solution um, so let's start by taking that one out it's not going anywhere at the moment anyway so it's not like we're uh, wasting anything I do need to think about how we're going to do this connection over here though let's see anything um, let's, uh, let's run that in. It takes a remarkably long time to do things like this. So we're going to come as far as that grid there, so we still haven't quite got enough. Okay, I take it back when I said I thought we had enough. We didn't. Uh, let's make some more. And we need a housing. I'll grab that and put that straight in here. Ready to program. Okay, so let's start thinking about the logic that we need while those are printing. Um, so um, what we're going to do, we'll alias up the um, regulator for in. It's not regulator, is it? It's pump. Pump in to D0 and alias um, pipe in to D1 and we'll alias pump out to D3 uh, so top of the, oops, D3 not R3 and we'll alias pipe radiator whoops call it pipe rad to D4 um, Okay, so that should give us the information that we need. So again, in the style that you'll be getting used to seeing by now, um, we're going to set this up. And actually, let's have a loop end there as well in case we need it. Okay, so let's think about what we need to do each cycle. So actually, this is going to be, uh, we're going to go through a series of states here. So um, we are going to need to know what state we are in. Um, and we are going to need to know whether certain conditions have been met to move us to the next state. So I am going to um, alias state as um, R, we use R11, it's a nice large number that's out of the way. And we're going to start by moving to state zero when we first turn it on. So uh, 
and we're going to start it in state 0. I mean, it will be state 0 by default, but let's assume so. State 0 um, means we need to check what is going on. Um, so to move from state 0, we will go to, to either state 1, which means um, we are filling the radiator. State 2, we're waiting for the radiator to cool. State 3, we're emptying the radiator. Um, and then st st after state 3, we can go back to state 0, which is check whether or not we're in a position to um, actually fill anything. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to say if the state is equal to 0, we're going to jump to check. So check is going to do some checks, and I don't know what those are going to look like yet, which may move the state forward. And if it does, in fact, we're going to do a B, E, uh, e I'm going to do that. No, I'm not, because I don't want to accidentally, I'm going to jump back to loop end. I want to retain control here. So we're going to basically have a series of these that are going to do the same thing. So depending on what state the, uh, the state machine is in, um, it will do different things. So um, that's going to go to fill, that's going to go to cool, that's going to go to empty. And each of these little bits of code is going to do something. So fill is going to do something and that's going to go to loop end. Call is going to do something and that's going to go to loop end. And empty is going to do something and that's going to go to loop end. So let's think these through in order. Well, not necessarily in order, actually, in order of what's easiest. So if we know we're in a cooling cycle, um, it's actually really simple um, because what we do is we say, so in this loop here, we're going to load pipe in temperature into R0. Whoops. And we're going to load pipe rad temperature into R1. We best also pick up the pressures. At least we need to know whether there's anything in there. So um, pressure. Right. So if it's cooling, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, if the temperature is still greater than, let's say, 25 C, which is 298 Kelvin, then uh, we're just going to basically just jump to loop end. So we're going to say uh, BGT R1298 loop end, i.e. do nothing at all. However, if it is less than 298, oh good, then we can move the state to 3, which will start it emptying. Right, so if it's emptying, we will... want to do a couple of things. So if the pr uh, so we want to turn on if the pressure is greater than zero we want to turn on so if B EQZ it's very difficult to think straight when this is going off in the background. Um, if the pressure is zero, that's when we know we're finished. So at that point, we're going to jump to um, we're going to jump to is empty, um, which can be down here. It's probably not the most efficient piece of code. Um, at that point, we're going to save to pump out out 
on zero. We're going to turn the pump off. Right, and we're going to move state zero. Okay, so well, that's when it knows it's empty. Otherwise, what are we going to do? Um, if it's not empty, we are going to uh, just wait, actually. So we'll just jump back to loop end. So that will go through the process of emptying until that reaches zero pressure, at which point it will go into state zero, which is the check state. So again, filling is fairly similar. Um, what we need to do is we need to monitor the pressure inside there. And we need to say BLT uh, actually, if it's, if it's greater than, if R2 is greater than, so let's say we're going to pump it to, uh, let's start now at 200. We'll probably change it later, but 200 kPa, right? So at 200, we're going to jump to is full. Is full is going to turn off the pump. So we're going to set to pump in on zero, move state two, and then jump to loop end. Otherwise, we want to move the pump in on to one. That's the bit we missed here. Pump out on one. Okay, and if it's cooling, I'm also going to add an extra piece of logic in here that if it's cooling, explicitly turns off both of these pumps while it's cooling. So if we accidentally turn one on, it will turn them both off. We don't want anything to happen while it's cooling. Okay, so that's those things. Now the more challenging state is what do we do when it's in a check state. So it first starts up, it doesn't really know what's going on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to um, say if the pressure is zero, then we're going to set the state to one. We're going to tell it to fill. So we can actually jump to is empty. So B E Q R2 So if the pressure is equal to zero, then we can jump to is empty, which will fill it. If the pressure is not zero, then we say B G T um, so if the radiator pipe is greater than 298, then we're going to jump to is full, actually, um, which will set it into a state of cooling. Otherwise, we'll move state so it's full, it's cool, we're going to move the state to three and empty. Okay, I'm certain I've missed something, especially with the siren going off in the background, knowing that we're working under pressure of time, um, but I think that's probably what we need it to do. So this is gas 
cooling control. Door incoming. Door incoming. Gas cooling control. Confirm that, confirm that. Export that. Well, let's see whether or not that works. Feels a bit too easy so far. Um, right. Do we have enough pipes now? I do hope so. I suspect we haven't. How long have I got on the storm? Uh, 360. All right. Well, I think that's ticks, so I think that means we've got three minutes. Can we do it? I reckon we probably can. We can get it set up. I don't imagine we can do any of the necessary debugging, but at least we can get it set up, can't we? Um, right. Hydration critical. Oh, this is volume pump going the wrong way. Volume pump, hot gas radiator in. Volume pump, hot gas radiator out. Hunger critical. Hot gas, hot gas radiator. Pipe analyzer, hot gas main. Okay, so we've definitely got an error. I should also be writing the state to uh, DB so that I can actually read it, but we've got an error on line 13. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, I don't think we've got time, as I say, to do debugging now. wonder whether we've got time to even lay this in, but let's give it a go. Um, famous last words. Oh, I thought I had one pipe left. Have I not? Have I actually come up one pipe short? I have. Okay. All right. So we can't connect that either. Uh, well, we could do actually. I am alert. I am very, very alert to an incoming storm. Okay. That's connected. We must respray that. Um, right, line 13, pipe in, temperature. Okay, I'm not sure what the issue was there, I'll be honest. However, I don't think we have time to worry about that right now. Storms are really irritating when you're trying to do, uh, design and develop something, but there we go. Right, we are clearly not going to get whoops, the uh, composting done in this episode. Uh, we're already at an hour and ten, but at least we've got some space to build it now. Storm incoming. Storm incoming. 
I kind of feel that perhaps uh, if I just grew pumpkins, it would be easier. Because the seeds would stack. Warning. Warning. Storm. Incoming. Storm. Incoming. Warning. Warning. Storm. Incoming. Storm. Incoming. Plus they're a hell of a lot easier to find. Right, I have to do something with all this excess food and Storm. more to the point, Incoming. all these excess seeds. The seed yield is Warning. becoming ridiculous. Warning. See what I'm tripping over here. Ah, oh, seeds, more seeds. Should have known. Right. Uh, can I get these? No, don't think so. No. Okay. Um, right, let's put those in there. Come on, get the storm done already. I'm bored now things to do out there. They don't involve waiting for a storm to pass. Right, there we go, that's it starting at least. Right. What? That's not the right alert, is it? I wonder what's actually causing that alert. Uh, well. So, um, I'm not quite sure why it thinks we've got an uh, alert on a trader vessel landed. Um, 38, I think that's probably meant to have been 39. Or 28. Let's hope it wasn't 28. So it is coming from the fuel tank correctly, so I don't know, we'll have to investigate that. Oh, come on Storm, hurry up. I am bored now. the alert that you mean it to be. Clearly a, a little bit of a bug I need to work out in that uh, IC chip. Um, I would say we've got a bit of a problem though from the fact that the power is going crazy. I don't know whether that's an indication that the storm has messed with something. Um, or quite what really. I think we're going to brave going out there to try and figure out what's going on in the uh, substation. Right, I don't really understand. I mean, <laughs> the iron ingot got blown in here that she's for. We're fully charged anyway, that's a great state to be in. The 
Okay. Let's get in this switch room. At least we have now got these closed in. Right, okay, so... Oh, I'm going to regret this. Very easy to get lost. I, I'm not where I thought I was at all. Uh, okay, so fuel low, one three eight. Okay. So um, that's not what we wanted it to say. We wanted it to say um, probably pressure low, I guess, or possibly power low. Perhaps we'll say power low. Um, that's possibly more helpful. Yeah, let's say power low. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's fix that. And uh, yeah, it's all calm now. Right, we'll resave that. And uh, I'll just update the uh, the workshop version as well. So if anyone's using that, you can uh, get the up-to-date version. Um, although by the time you watch this, it will already have been fixed. So obviously, uh, no action required on your part. Um, I'll export that, and then I'll change that. Import that, and let's go back and try and debug the rest of our code. Okay, so that is fair. We have nearly burnt through all of the fuel. Um, let's top it up a bit. There's not much left in the pipes though. Um, and that's because the hydrogen's so damn hot um, until it cools down. Now, to be fair, it's down to 10 degrees now. Okay, it should actually mix again now. I think it wants the hydrogen to get below 5 actually, I think that was the safety margin we built in, not knowing how hot the oxygen was uh, that it was mixing with. Right, okay, let's try to finish debugging this gas cooler, because um, if we can get that working I think we'll call that a day on this episode, we are at an hour and 20 again. Um, right, so what is this doing? Uh, currently very little. Um, should it be doing? It should be saying there's zero in there and it should be turning this on even though there's nothing. Right, it's sure it doesn't want that turning on, but it's not so fussed about that, is it? Okay, so I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the state out so that we can actually see what's happening. So uh, we're going to do an SDB setting, and we're going to use state, and we're going to export that. Um, and actually, I'm going to do this before it starts running, just so that we can be completely sure that you know, because it, it'll have to pass through there. OK, that's fine. Export that. Let's grab that. See what state it thinks it's in, that will help. Okay, so it thinks it's in state zero where it's doing its check. So, why is it not working? I think it's probably not working because the temperature, on a, when it's empty, the temperature could be. Uh, no, hang on, right, so the first thing you should be doing is reading the pressure on the pipe radiator. So if that's zero, then it's empty, and if it's empty, 
then oh it's moving the state to zero that's not right is it well, it should be moving the state to one that should be saying fill it up okay so i think that's all that needs to happen i think it was just going back into the check state instead of into the fill state so obviously what i'm expecting to see is that this is going to now try to fill and it's never going to succeed because there's no gas connected up there but let's uh, flick that off because now we're going to go and get some more pipes or make some more pipes did we ever get any electrum out of that oh no because i killed the power on there didn't i let's see whether we can get this to work now Okay, so a few more pipes. What's going on with this now? It's really strange, it's auto combusting when it goes in, which is not an expected behaviour. That's cold. That's cold. That's cold. That's not cold. It's just wasting uh, wasting fuel, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, I don't quite understand what's going on. I need to think about that a bit more and try and diagnose it. However, let's finish one job at a time. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is try and get through here is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to connect this up to here. over here now yep okay that's good and the second thing we're going to do is much the same over here throw that switch there Okay, so there's no pumps, they're purely passive valves. Um, so obviously the pressure will eventually equalize. Um, but this is a big tank, so uh, it should be able to take quite a lot of fuel. Um, and as you can see, the gas that's in there is, uh, there's a lot of pollutant. We might just dump the pollutant at this point, actually. Just save us processing cooling it down. We're not using it for anything. So an extra atmosphere processor on here that just stripped out and dumped the pollutant would probably be a smart idea. Um, just get rid of it and then we can concentrate on cooling the other gases, the main component of which will be CO2, but you know the others are still useful to have. I think we're going to do that because really we're just not using pollutant at all. Um, so it's just kind of a waste of um, time and energy to try and cool it down um, when we could just throw it away so an atmospherics unit we're going to need some copper for that um, we're going to build an atmospherics unit we're going to put two filters into it um, and then I thought it wasn't coming out the second time then I was going to get a little bit frustrated then we're going to just dump it out through a passive vent Um, so I've got a few pipes left. Okay, 
there's literally zero point in keeping that for the moment. Later on, if we find a use for it, that's fine. But um, to be honest, the main thing it's good for is um, for let's go pick those up. Um, I only want one. I only want one. Um, the main thing it's good for um, is for um, either coolant or potentially for jetpack fuel. But for jetpack fuel, it's hazardous to use inside, so that doesn't make it great. Um, and for coolant, um, it's got quite good energy density, but to be honest, so is CO2. We've got tons of CO2. Um, and it's just less hazardous, so I just think why bother even keeping it? Um, we'll just chuck it out. Um, so I got the best place to do this. I'm probably on here. It's as good as any. Um, and then we'll put the uh, put the vent over here. and change the uh, filter but um, hopefully we won't have to do that too often. There we go. Let's go grab the filter from over here and then we're good to go. Okay. Whilst we're up this end. Slam that in there. Is that not going down? That's 30% in there. It's 30% in there. What's going on? It's like it's not running. Going down slowly in there. Uh, what's the numbers on what's coming in? 30. Okay. And in there it's down to 27. Okay, so it is working. It's just a bit slow. It seems weirdly slow. I expected this to have uh, pollutants streaming out of it. I mean, it is working, just not very fast. Okay, well, anyway, that's fine. That just gets rid of it. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to put a, going to put the other valve on there. There we go. So this pipe here is pure pollutant. Right, okay, that is working then. Good, right, okay. So that's helpful because we don't want to bother cooling the pollutant down. We're only going to dump it at the other end anyway. Um, 
So this is now 80% CO2. It's almost all CO2, to be honest, that we're going to be cooling down. Um, I'll let this just do its thing. Of course, what we haven't yet done is put any radiators onto there. Uh, let's cut through here. So I'm going to quickly remove the radiators from up here. And we're going to recite them onto the uh, overhead radiator array. Obviously, we'll need more radiators in the long term, but for now, I'll be nice and leave one on there. Um, it's not like we've got enough to solve the problem anyway. Spread them as far away as possible. Right. Um, oh, water again. Okay, right. So, how much pollutants is left in there? 15%. They're st still really taking quite a while to shift. I'm quite surprised. I guess there is a lot. Um, and I guess actually it's 15% it's not whoops it's not 15% of what's in the pipe it's 15% of all of that which is quite a lot actually if you look at the number there's uh, over a thousand moles of pollutant in there um, so that's actually fair at that point okay so I'm going to turn this on we're going to let this do its thing it's in state one it's filling up so you should pressurize up until it hits about 200 there we go and because it's a state machine rather than just a simple switch now it's in a state two it's waiting until that's cooled it doesn't matter that as it cools the pressure is dropping it's not constantly top topping it up with small quantities of hot gas that's bringing the temperature back up again it's put that quantity of gas in and it's going to let that quantity of gas cool down so that's 200 moles, roughly 250 moles at, at a time going in. Um, it's, it's a kind of a drop in the ocean compared to the 8,000 moles that's in there. But in theory, that means um, that in sort of 30 cycles, that tank will be empty. Um, but also, if you look at the temperature, we can see it's coming down actually, you know, not a terrible rate. I mean, it's still very, very hot in there, um, but um, it's considerably cooler than... Um, considerably cooler than uh, it's at 94 degrees whereas that's at 260 so it's already brought it down quite a lot just by dropping it into here and it's coming down pretty quickly so I think this is going to be a quite a good strategy for cooling the gas down uh, I might even move the threshold down further because actually colder gas might be more useful to us um, so I might move it below 25 C because it is it's doing the job um, I think I'm going to do that. That's fine. It knows what it's doing. I'll also be interested to see what happens when we reboot the system, because obviously that's what's going to happen when uh, each time we reload the game. So that's why it's important that we have the ability for it to figure out what the hell's going on. Um, I can bring it down to 15 degrees. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to bring it down to 10 degrees. I'm going to go crazy. Um, 283. Um, 283. Um, oops, before I hit confirm, let's just re-save that gas cooling control. Let's make sure that is the same code. Gas cooling control, resave it, overwrite. I'll put that up onto the workshop as well, so anyone if watching this can pick it up. Um, let me just do that now very quickly. Um, come on, hurry up. Okay, I take back what I said about doing it very quickly. Um, and we'll re-export that. Of course, there may well be bugs in it. Um, if there are, I'll find them in future episodes. Um, if you're lucky, I'll have found them by the time you use the code. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, there we are. Let's jump straight to state two. It recognised that this is still cooling. 
Um, and actually, that's already down. Look at that. That is already down to 11 degrees. So that was amazingly fast. And once it hits 10, it's in switch state. It's now emptying it. Sucking the pressure out of there. It's going down, down, down. And of course, that gas is ready to be processed. It's relatively cool. It's all good to use. And then once we get down to that being empty, we should... I'm just going to watch and check it actually does do it. And as long as it does, we're going to end the video there. Um, so getting there. And meanwhile, this should be coming in here at a temperature that we're actually ready to process. If anything, it's a bit too cold, but uh, you can see it's coming in. I think the CO2 filters have expired. Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, yep. And yep. Okay. Well, let's replace those. Um, so we're going to need that. Um, carbon dioxide medium filter. There we go. Let's have a couple of them. Um, we know we've got extremely large amounts of carbon dioxide, so we may as well have some medium filters for it. one over oh, the day when we need a medium nitrogen filter never mind we will get there once we get the composters running they will produce some nitrogen and some hydrogen so that will be beneficial um, and the other reason I'm doing all of this now is that I do want to build an advanced furnace um, at some point quite soon. Obviously that's only going to generate even larger quantities of hot gas, which is why I wanted to just deal with the uh, system as it was before we started putting higher demands on it. Um, that's nearly empty. Let's just check it recycles and into a fill mode. Right, watched pot never boils and all that. Let's um, state of this now. This is emptying, so you can see this is bringing this through here. Now, hopefully, what we'll see, if I were to look at the state of the carbon dioxide, is it's slightly less than the 99 degrees C it was the last time we looked at it. Yeah, it's down to a mere 85. Wow, there's uh, there's a lot of pressure in there. We're not going to run out of uh, CO2 anytime soon, are we? Um, in fact. I might even adjust the uh, might even adjust that um, and actually dump some because it's very hot and a oh, very large quantity rather and it's still quite hot so um, I think we might just make that one this could be spectacular no it's fine Uh, I'm slightly surprised that's not going down at this point. Okay, it's definitely dumping it though. Okay. Right, meanwhile, over here, the last few moles are being dragged out, kicking and screaming. Let's just check that is on maximum, yes. It's really painful when you get down to tiny amounts like this. I mean, there is an argument that says if the pressure is below a certain level rather than zero, but I'd rather fully empty it because um, I don't want to find there's combustible gas in here. Um, and then I dump hot gas in on top. Um, it's definitely safer to fully empty it. It's just a bit frustrating to watch as it slowly, slowly goes down, down, down. Um, so we've got down to only 200 moles of uh, pollutant in here is now 97% CO2, which is good. Um, I mean, arguably we could start dumping CO2, but we may as well have this set up to cool it properly. Um, I'm quite impressed with how quickly it did that cycle. I'm less impressed by how long it's taking to empty. In fact, 
it's almost not going down because it's heating up in the sunlight faster than uh, the pressure can drop although the number of moles is falling yeah I definitely think we're going to modify this code I just want to see it run first but we're going to modify this code so this goes down to uh, below 0.1 kilopascals we just empty it I think uh, that's a hundred that's 10 pascals that will be uh, uh, I was going to say 0 0.1, 100 pascals, yeah, that'll be fine, that'll be quite low enough. Um, and actually we might pump it slightly high, there we go. Right, good, that did work. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that system's working really nicely, um, but I do want to... Okay, that's the uh, solid fuel generator running out of fuel, um, which is not a surprise. Um, right, so instead of setting this where R2 is uh, EQZ, we're actually going to say LT um, 0.1. We're going to treat that as empty. Um, so similarly, um alert alert of power low lt 0.2 alert alert okay i think that's better i'm also going to pump it slightly higher um i'm going to try 500 um i think it will still cool quite quickly Export that. Um, let's just check I haven't broken it before I publish it to the workshop. So hopefully soon we can uh, start remixing fuel. Okay, so that's recognised that it's cooling because it's got something in there. So it's at 76. That's still at over 200, so that's pretty good actually. Let's come down that much that quickly. Um, right, let's see whether or not we can safely. Actually, let's just check this before I turn anything on. Uh, right, that's down at 8 degrees. That's at 4 degrees. That should be okay to mix now. Yeah, that seems to be mixing. And we can repressurize this tank. Okay, that's good news. Uh, we haven't got a whole lot of uh, H2 left though, have we? So that's going to be an issue that we will need to solve in the short term with a bit of mining. I'm going to flip that off. I don't want to, I don't mind making it all into fuel because we're not going to use it for anything else, but I don't want to make it all into fuel and pump it all into that generator and then find we need some for either the furnace or something else like a welder or something. That's actually got hotter now, so it's turned itself off anyway. Um, and that'll be the result of what's coming through from here, I suspect. Oh, that one's actually used. Oh, they're both used. Okay, well, that's a surprise that we've processed enough nitrogen to use the filters up. Well, perhaps we will have that medium nitrogen filter after all. Probably just the one though. Take ages to make. And this is definitely time for it to be the end of the episode. Um, right, come on, go faster. Faster, 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 faster. If you're watching this sometimes too, I'm sorry, that was probably almost impossible to understand. Um, right. Um, if you're not watching it on times two, you probably should be at this point, um, let's be honest. Um, right, okay, let's go and put these into the nitrogen filter. Ah, drop the mouse again. Um, whoops, in there, in there, right. Okay, there we go, so that's some nitrogen. And uh, 
We've probably actually make some air. That's incredible. One day we'll get the hand pressurized. There's not much nitrogen in here, but there is not zero, right? So, um, and in fact, if we look at this overall large tank, um, look, there's 23 moles of it. That's, that's worth having. Um, it's a hell of a lot of work to recover 23 moles of nitrogen, but, um, you know, we have to do what we can. Um, right. Okay, so I think that will do for this episode. I think that's all working. I'm just very quickly going to um, re-update the gas cooling control. Uh, publish, push those changes to the workshop. Um, hopefully that will make it more efficient. Hopefully it won't crash. Um, there we go. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope uh, that you have some ideas from that that will help you to deal with your own hot gas problems uh, if that's not too personal um, and uh, in the meantime we've built a beautiful bright pink um, television signal receiver um, which really does look quite incredible um, so I hope to see you again on the next episode um, once we've got this hot gas fully under control, which I think we nearly have, we can start thinking about both composting and the advanced furnace, both of which will be very useful additions to our base, but that is for next time. So I hope to see you on the next video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, please do subscribe to the channel, please do like, please do comment, please do share with all your friends. Um, and in fact, share with people that aren't even your friends if you wish. Uh, anyone you think would like to know about Stationeers and would like to watch a playthrough on Mars. Um, so that is it from me and I will see you on the next episode.